Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus, saints. Listen, we just want to say that we love you so much, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for going before this podcast on today, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you have your divine way. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for keeping us in the night, waking us in the morning light, allowing us to still be in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for allowing us to have the ingredients of love, the ingredients of patience, the ingredients of long suffering, the ingredients of the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. We just thank you right now for meekness, Lord. Lord, we thank you. I thank you right now for my brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would take over this podcast, Lord, that you would have your divine weight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless the ear bone of the listener, Lord. I pray that you would allow them to get out of it, Lord God, what you desire for them to get, for you, what you desire for us to get. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you on this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And of course we're going to walk on water. You know that. You know we're going to walk on water. You already know. Amen. We're going to walk on water on today. In the name of Jesus. And so... We are going to start in the book of wisdom. How many know, many of us, we need that wisdom. Amen. We need that wisdom. And so we're going to walk on water on today. And we're going to start in Proverbs chapter 27. All right. Proverbs chapter 27. And because I have time to read it, I am going to read the whole thing. But we are going to highlight verse 17. All right. We're going to highlight verse 17. So let's read 27. The verse 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth what does that mean stop boasting about tomorrow you don't know we don't know we don't know if we're going to be here or not we don't know if this country is going to be the same or not or the kingdom you live in going to be the same or not we just don't know lord's willing we say lord's willing for everything you know lord's willing uh, Lord's willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Lord's willing, we'll get this done tomorrow. Lord's willing, uh, the Lord will allow us to have this. Lord's willing, amen. Lord's willing. So we are not supposed to boast for tomorrow. Verse 2 says, Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. A stranger and not thine own lips. Ooh, saints, that's a doozy. Have you ever felt like, you know, if, you know, uh, I, I know that I'm great at this. You know, I know I have a talent for this. And, uh, yeah, I might as well just toot, toot, toot my own horn. Amen. I might as well do it. Well, the Bible tells us don't do it. All right. The Bible says don't do it. Okay. Don't do it. It's better for someone else to do it. Verse 2 says, Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. You may say, Well, I don't know anyone. And you know, no one praises me. Let me tell you something. You might be around people that nobody feel led to give you a compliment. Nobody feel led to blow the horn for you. Nobody feel led or think about telling you what a good job you did and how you did great. Can I tell you something? That if you are around people that will not do it, I'm telling you what I know. 
the Lord will use somebody in the street. Do you understand? The Lord will use somebody in the street to tell you that you are such a kind person. You are such a loving person. I'm talking about somebody that don't even know you. They, the Lord will use somebody if you have to bring somebody from across the waters. You understand? Bring somebody on an airplane to where you are. The Lord is going to make sure that you know what He thinks. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? I'm trying to tell you. The Lord is going to bring somebody. Do you understand? So when the Bible tells us do something or don't do something, I'm a living witness on a lot of these things that the, His Word works. And I know if the Word works on the parts that I've seen up close and personal, all of it works. Amen. All of it works. And so I don't know who it's for. But I want you to be encouraged. Amen. Because if you don't get any compliments, if you don't get any accolades, if you don't get anybody saying good job, if you don't get anybody saying that you did great, trust me, keep living. Amen. If you really are doing great, if you really are a great person, if you really are deserving of this compliment or of whatever this is, the Lord is going to make sure you get it. You better hear me. He's going to make sure you get it. Verse 3. A stone is heavy and the sand weighty. But a fool's raft is heavier than them both. And so you have to forgive me for my voice. All right. We slept under the fan. Something I will not be doing again. Amen. Because honestly the fan is very 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 bad especially one that is hanging up in the ceiling it's not good to sleep under the fan if you want your voice the next day the next day amen so please bear with me saints amen verse 3 says a stone is heavy now think about a stone a rock it is it is pretty heavy and the sand is weighty all right, the sand is weighty, a rock is heavy, but a fool's raft is heavier than them both. Amen. A fool's raft. And the Bible specifies a fool because in another scripture, the Lord tells us that a soft answer turns away wrath. A fool does not know to have a soft answer. Okay, and if I can be honest, all of us have been foolish before. Amen. All of us have had an answer that was not soft before. Amen. So a soft answer turns away a wrath. Okay, but the Bible says a stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Amen. For wrath is cruel and anger is is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Okay. Wrath is cruel. Cruel is one of those words where man is like jealousy, cruel as the grave. Anytime we begin to talk about jealousy, all right. And cruel, that word cruel sneaks in there beside jealousy. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. A grave is cold. A grave is dark. A jealousy is as cruel as this place. Uh, it's no movement. Cruel, you know. No life. No movement. No breath. No being. Not not anymore. Not being anymore. Okay. It kind of reminds us of the earth being being dark and void, right? Being dark and void, no form, no nothing, all right? Not even really what a name because he called it earth in the beginning, all right? Um, 
We are on verse 4. But you know I be wanting to go back and look. <laughs> I be wanting to go back and look. At the beginning. Because I don't care how many times I read it. There's always something else jumping off the page. It says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and it was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning was the second day. And God said, let the waters under the firmament, I believe. Hang on, saints. Under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of water called he seas. So he he, he didn't even have a name, right? So he gave it a name in the beginning that we know of, all right? He gave it a name in the beginning that we know of, okay? Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? The Bible is telling us right now that wrath and anger is even better than envy. Wrath, I'm mad and I'm and I'm letting you know that I'm mad. I'm mad and I'm letting you know that I'm upset. Wrath and anger, you know that I'm upset. You know that my feelings are not right towards you. You know that I am displeased with whatever you've just done. Because wrath shows up, anger shows up, and it's not quiet. But envy waits. Envy is the worst of them all. Why? Because a lot of times, envy is quiet. Shh. Envy is kept a secret. Right? And But envy is deadly. Envy is deadly. Do you remember when Ahab wanted the vineyard? And Jezebel said, don't worry. I'll get it for you. And she killed it. She killed the man and took his stuff. Envy is deadly. So when the Lord says, stop envying your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, Man servant, maid servant, Oscar, don't do it. He's saying it for a reason because he came, lived in Jesus, uh huh, and he knows exactly what the flesh is capable of, what is worse than what, and what and how the flesh will react to certain things. And so I believe you and I should really take note. This says, wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Who's able to do it? If if I if I may. The Pharisees begin to think that Jesus was a blasphemous person. 
one of the reasons they began to think that Jesus was a blasphemous person was because Jesus kept saying that he was the son of God. I am the son of God. I am the son of God. So the Pharisees who were well learned in scripture thought Jesus to be a big head um, toot your own horn blasphemous person. That's what they thought. And so because they thought that they had what the Bible speaks of as cruel wrath because they always sought to set him up so they could kill him. They had cruel wrath and they had outrageous anger. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Y'all want this thug, this murderer, this crazy madman over Jesus? Right? Talking about the Pharisees. But one thing that we can't say Although they noticed that Jesus did miracles and things like this. And many people uh, said that he was using Beelzebub and, and the devil to do these things. But one thing that I have not heard and one thing that I've never thought about the Pharisees and the scribes is that they envied Jesus. So the way that Jesus died. And of course we all know he rose again and he's sitting beside the Father. We all know. But the way that Jesus died was because people thought he was a toot your own horn blasphemous person. Not per se envying him. But look at how he died. Look at how cruel Look at how his vision was so marked so nobody could even recognize who he was. Look at the, 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 the cat of nine tails that he would be with. Look at them pulling his roots from the beard. Look at all of these different things. And we cannot pinpoint envy to the ones that did it. Now the ones that did it said this is somebody... That you they on horn. This is somebody that feel like that a supreme being is their real father. This is somebody that we got to get rid of. Because he's teaching this to everybody. And as cruel as the things that they did to him. Still envying wasn't even in that. And the Bible tells us who can stand before envy. Now we know anger, we know we know anger and we know um wrath, but who can stand before envy? Me and you, let me tell you how stupid flesh is. Me and you walk around and try to get people to be Jealous and envious of us. What is wrong with us? Is that are you crazy? I'm saying like, what in the world? I'm really trying to understand what is wrong with creation. What is so? What is wrong with us? Where did we go wrong? And who dropped us on our head. Because some of us. We walk around trying to get people to be envious of us. Look at what I got. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I did. Look at where I been. Look at where I'm going. Look at this and look at that. And we try on a there are people that try on a day to day basis to get people to be jealous and envious of them. It is redundant. Who can stand before this spirit? We think we can stand before this spirit. But let me tell you what envy will do. That anger and wrath will not. Envy will wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. To set you up 
to fail. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Envy will wait and wait and smile and laugh and all that. Let's eat together. Envy will wait to set you up to fail. You better hear me. That's what envy do. This is why the Bible said, who can stand before envy? Because envy is going to plot. Envy is going to go down the road and dig a hole for you. Because envy can't stand your guts. And you know what we do? While we headed toward that hole, we stand and showing our stuff. Look at me. Look at what I got. Look at what I'm doing. Look at where I'm going. Look at where we at. Look at where we at. We just as, as slow. Sometimes we're just so slow. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Why? It goes back to envy. But you kiss me. But you did this, you did that. And a lot of times because we've been kissed, because we've gotten gifts, because this and because that, sometimes we can feel this is my friend. Let me let you in on something. No greater love than this than a man laid down his life for his friend. Who in your circle will die for you? You, I'm, and yeah, when we say die, we think about take a bullet. But let me do you one better, okay? Because we already know that we're not going to wait to see if somebody take a bullet for us. Who in your circle will die to their character for you? Okay? This ain't got nothing to do with a bullet. Who in your circle will die to their character, their wants, their desires, what they want to do? Who in your circle will die to themselves for you? answer that most of us can say nobody because everybody do exactly what they want to do you know why because we love ourselves that's why faithful is the wound of a friend who had wounds that you can call your friend Jesus did. So when all else fails and everybody else pack up and walk away, you better know who your friend is. Faithful is the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The fool soul loveth a honeycomb but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet verse 7 is amazing verse 7 is amazing verse 7 says the full soul loathe a honeycomb why? Because the soul is full, it's fat, it's well fed. So if you come to that same soul and you just got a little honeycomb, or you just got a little sweet words, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. I already know Jesus loves me. Tell me something Jesus going to do for me. That's a full, fat soul that ain't got nothing to do with nowhere to go. And some kind words, it's not good enough. But you take that, those same words, I just want to let you know Jesus loves you, to a soul that is in trouble, to a soul that is hungry for kindness, to a soul that is going through, and you say, I just want to let you know Jesus loves you, that, those same words will cause tears to fall from that person's eyes. Do you know why? Because their soul is not fat already. They will receive such simple words as, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. You just don't know how much I needed to hear that. You're not going to hear that from everybody. You know why? Because everybody well versed, well scripted, and they just, they just good, 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 just headed to hell every day. But you get somebody 
that is in the desert of this land, in the desert of friends, of family, you get somebody in the desert of kindness, get somebody in the desert and tell them the same words and you will get a different result. Plus, most of us feel entitled. The full soul loves with a honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Even the truth of the word is bitter, but to someone that's hungry, it's still sweet. Why? Because now it teaches me how to walk upright. It teaches us how to walk upright. Verse 8. As a bird that wandereth from her nest. So is a man that wandereth from his place. Where is a man's place? Do you know? Where is a man's place in life? Do you know? A man's place in life. Is to be a son of God. And if it's the Lord's will, it's to be a husband, a leader, a governor, a ruler, a provider. What is man's place in life? And these things sound simple. You mean to tell me I'm born just to be a leader, a provider, a son of God? A husband, a daddy. Do you think I'm just born for this? It sounds simple, but a person that is doing it and doing it right finds fulfillment. Do you know why? Because that is why they were created. And so to be in the purpose of why we were created, we find fulfillment. But because we want to be this and be that and be this, you know why? Because the big screen told us to be it. We don't find fulfillment. And they will not tell you this. In fact, they will fake the funk until the last breath that they take from themselves. To let you know. They didn't find fulfillment in that stuff. It was the simplicity of the word. Sons and daughters of God. It was the simplicity of the word. I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. I'm going to be this. You can be it. We can be it. But will God be there when we get there? The answer is no. If it's not his will, you can do it. You can be it. But it doesn't mean you're going to find what everybody's looking for, which is happiness, fulfillment, a reason to live. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. What is a man's place? Nine. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Is there anyone that's able to take hearty counsel? Or does it have to be a um, a word or words of uh, adoration? Who can take a hearty counsel today? I want it to be what I want to hear. Who can take a hearty counsel today and listen? Who can do it? Thine own friend. And thy father's friend forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. My son be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. And hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. 
Verse 12. A prudent man hide himself when he foresee evil. But the simple pass on and are punished. In this day and time, we really have to look and examine what does punish look like. Now, to us, punish look like having the beard pulled from the root. Punish look like a, 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 a plate of thorns put, placed on a person's head. Punishment look different to us. Punishment is having chains on or handcuffs on and our hands being tied behind our back. Punishment, right? But in this day, because sin abounds, punishment look different. Okay? What is punishment? Punishment is going one way when you're supposed to be going another way. That's punishment. You know why? Because the end thereof is death and destruction. You just don't know it. You think you're having a good time. <laughs> We're having so much fun. La, la, la. And you ain't even supposed to be on that road. That's punishment. Punishment is living a life unfulfilled. That's punishment. Punishment don't always have to be a whip across the back. Punishment is not walking in God's laws and statutes. See where that get us. That's punishment. We don't get it because we think we get shiny trinkets here and shiny trinkets there. And oh, look at me. I get to make somebody else envy me. Right? But punishment sometimes and, and envying because envying can last for years and years and years. I can set you up for years and years and years and then take a deep breath and die after I see you fall in that hole. My life is fulfilled because my life turned to trying to make you fall. Punishment can go on. We can go on and have a great time. We can go to Vegas. We can go to New York. We can go wherever we want to go. Visit all the lights, cameras, action. Or we can go to Hollywood. All this stuff. And punishment can come after we take our last breath. What's punishment? Hell fire. You know why? Because you were not an obedient person. Punishment. What is punishment? Because every word we use in 2024... I believe we need to meditate and understand that this word looks different today. There is nobody in the street stoning us with rocks. What is punishment? Because it can look different. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproveth thee, reproveth me. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So the simple, I already know that the Lord said, and they gave me all these red flags that I don't need to walk with these people I don't need to walk with this person I don't need to be friends with these people I don't need to be riding around with these people the Lord has already made it clear in so many ways that I don't need to but guess what I'm simple minded dodo you know it's not clicking it ain't clicking so because I'm simple I pass on okay yeah let's go yeah let's ride okay yeah yeah I'll go with y'all okay yeah 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 oh you understand and punishment might not be that we have a wreck punishment might not be that I get killed the same day punishment could be the Lord separating his friendship from me that's what punishment can be but to us we got to look at punishment. Well, it don't seem like I'm punished. The light bill paid. The water bill paid. It don't seem like I'm punished. Punishment. You don't have what you could have because you're disobedient. You don't have what you could have because you choose your way. That's punishment. Thirteen says... 
take his garments that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. Listen to 14 again. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. 14. <clears throat> He that blesses his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning it shall be counted a curse to him. When I'm looking at 14 let's look at 15 a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a and a continuance woman are alike. Let's read it again. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Now saints, I gotta hold we gotta look up contentious, okay? Hold that thought. I believe it will let me still record because I'm on my laptop this morning. Let's look up contentious. Because 14, I want to understand 14. Okay, involving heated argument, given to arguing or provoking argument, causing or likely to cause an argument controversial. All right. This is what the Bible means by contentious. Lord, don't let us be contentious. Us females, don't let us be contentious, argumentative, quarrelsome, dis, dis, disputing, disputive, confrontational, ready for a fight, warring, belligerent, threatening, battling, fighting. Bad tempered, bickering. Does that look like some of us today? Okay. Moot, vexed, ambiv amb amb ambivalent, ambivalent, unsure, uncertain, unresolved, undecided, unsettled. Amen. So let's read 14 again. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. A continual dropping in a very in a very rainy day, and a in a contentious woman are alike. Whosoever hideth her hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand which betrayeth itself whosoever hideth her hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand which betrayeth itself oh my goodness 16 saints can I please I hope we're still I hope you, I hope you can still hear me can I paint a picture for you can I paint a picture for you verse 16 whosoever hideth her the contentious woman Hideth the wind, got the wind, and ointment. Now, have anybody ever passed by you and you said, he smelled good or she smelled good? Well, the Bible says hiding this contentious woman is like hiding ointment in the wind. The wind is going to make the smell pass your nose. This is why Proverbs is just amazing. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand, which betrayeth itself. 17 is the verse we want to highlight. Iron sharpeneth iron, 
So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. 17. Remember, we, we talked about iron sharpening iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Now, those of us that have, I guess, natural friends, it's easy to to do that. You can find your friend low and in the in the valley of decision and depressed, and you can say something, and of course that countenance picks up. But when we talk about a friend that sticks closer than a brother, have you ever been going through something so bad and you get in the word or Jesus or the Father whispers something to you that lifts your whole mood up out of the muddy grubs? I have, saints. Have you ever been through something so bad and the Lord himself lift us up out of the muddy grub because of something we read out of the Bible or because something he said I'm with you I'll never leave you just anything and you witness your whole mood being lifted up I have saints and people of the right spirit can do the same thing where you can find yourself in the muddy grubs and they can lift you up. But it's not a lot of us that can do it. Because a lot of us are in the muddy grubs ourselves. But some of us that have been practicing the word of God. Amen. We can lift others up. We can. Amen. We can. 18 says. Whoso keepeth the fig tree. Shall eat, excuse me, turning the page, shall eat fruit thereof, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. As in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Saints, do you understand what this the nineteen just said? We are looking in the mirror of the word today. Verse nineteen just suggested that as in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Wow. What does this mean? Face answer it to face in water. So the heart of man to man. When you, you know, like a mirror, when you look in the water and you see your face, you see your reflection. <clears throat> Most often times when you're out and about if you because we're made up of majority water if you see a lot of people frowning at you saints when you're out and about if you see a lot of people frowning back at you it's more than likely because you are frowning. Ain't that funny? If you see a lot of people smiling back at you, it's more than likely because you are smiling. Because when we look at creation, it's a mirror. It's a mirror. And I hate to go here, but the way I see things you can look at two mountains beside each other right 
And those two mountains can mirror a lady's legs. When they're when they're propped up, those two mountains beside each other. Like when I tell you that there are many, 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 many things that the Lord has shown me to where I'm talking about even animals, chickens, dogs, uh, horses, all type of things. When we look at creation, this is why it's so important, birds and bees. This is why it's so important to do unto others as we have them to do unto us. It is a supernatural law. Why is it supernatural? Because everybody cannot do it. The Lord challenges us because it's face to face like in water because it's heart to heart like in man and the Lord challenges those of us that are sons and daughters of God he challenges us to do different although I made you when you see someone frowning you frown that's where they get the saying monkey see monkey do I see a monkey just like you it's stupid monkey see monkey do but in all actuality most often times People are going to see and do what you do. If I came outside and when I came out, you didn't pick my paper up with your paper because your newspaper was right beside mine. And you know I come out at the same time you come out. And when you bent down there, both of us the same age, you bent down there and pick yours up and left mine down there, guess what? Tomorrow, if I come out before you, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to bend down and get my own paper and you can pick yours up. Instead of me picking mine up and yours up and say, hey, I got your paper. You made me pick mine up. So tomorrow you're going to pick yours up. And the Lord challenges us to be better. He challenges us to be different. He says, what use is it if they don't wave at you and then you don't wave at them? What use is that? If they don't wave at you, you still wave at them. If they don't smile at you, you still smile at them. If they're not glad with you, you still be glad with them. They're not nice to you, still be nice to them. This is the Lord challenging us. Although in your flesh, yes, face answers to face and a man's heart to a man's heart. You mad at me? I'm mad at you. The Lord challenges us. Be better. Do better. Because it's you that have the testimony that I live in you. So I want you to do better than that. Because instead of you reflecting them, I want you to reflect me. Who died for those that hated my guts. Who died for those that wanted me dead. I died for those that couldn't stand me. He died for those saints. Where did we leave off at? We left off on, okay, verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Hell and destruction are never full. This has just got me quiet this morning, saints. Because I believe verse Proverbs chapter 27. I just believe it's reading our mail today. I don't know. I just. Good God. Yeah, I just believe that. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of a man are never satisfied. 
as the fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold so is a man to his praise though thou shouldest bray a fool in a in a mortar among wheat with a pestle yet will not his foolishness depart from him verse 22 I guess foolishness is skin deep though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle yet will not his foolishness depart from him be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds for the riches are not forever and doth the crown endure to every generation man saints now I'm reading this this the the word Proverbs chapter 27 and I have been watching the the last couple of days I have been watching a I guess a series and I don't really like to get into those type of things but when I when I see that the Lord is giving me some things out of it that help me understand where I am and helps me understand what he wants me to do and he's de- like dealing with me in it I'll, I'll, I don't feel bad about watching it and I won't share what it is because it's not that important but these scriptures that I'm reading my mind just keep flashing back and this in this in this little series or whatever it's not even found it or I didn't think it was on the word of God but I'm seeing now like there's one part in the movie where there's this king and the king is like every now and then he turns mad not and, and mad I'm meaning crazy right and then and then he comes back to himself but and they were trying to rid him and free him of this madness and so there was this doctor that said hey it's a back in the day type of picture so it's not you know 2024 but it's like back in the day when they had kings and queens and this doctor said I can heal him of this madness uh, give him to me and, and uh, you know so they turned the king over to him for a couple of months and the, the way that the man was trying to um, he was trying to <clears throat> cure the king was to torture him he told him that all your life you've been given everything that you have and you've never learned to submit and because you've never learned to submit your mind is not submitting to you when it wants to go mad it just goes mad because it wants to so I have to teach you submission this is what the doctor told him So the doctor says, I'm going to teach you submission. He started calling the king boy. He addressed the king as boy. Come here, boy. And uh, every day he would put him in an ice cold bath and, and dunk his head in water over and over again for hours and hours ice cold water just keep dunking his head and the king is the king is screaming ah, ah, and the servant that's supposed to be with him at all times they made him stand outside the door don't come in so day and night day and night day and night he hears the king just screaming in agony and they're putting all type of hot things on him and torturing this man and just torturing this man and doing all type of stuff to this man and he's screaming and screaming and screaming and all of this to try to heal him right but the bible says that let me find it again and that and I'm reading Proverbs 27 and it's showing the Lord keep flashing 
those things back and I'm like to make a long story short it didn't it did not heal him it broke him even more <laughs> he went even more mad he was more mad than what he was in the beginning because a spirit you can't exercise a spirit out these Time, these kind come out by fasting and prayer. So a lot of times we try to take natural stuff and like envy. Like we were talking about envying. A lot of times we try to take natural stuff. Take that natural stuff. And we will try to fix something spiritual so just say there's a, a demon of envy on me God forbid and in order for me to take natural stuff and try to fix this demon it means I'm going to try to go buy more stuff so I won't have a need to envy and because I think that they might get this next I'm going to go get it first and I'm going to go get this and I'm going to get that so I don't have to feel the need to envy that's not fixing the demon that's making it worse because now I have this spending habit of I got to get this before anybody around me get it because I don't want to envy if they get it and I don't have it that's not fixing anything it's, it means that we're going to have to fight a bigger trial down the road because we're putting a band-aid on something that's ready to bust open so it just made me think about these scriptures here it's just many things in these scriptures. And to be honest, saints, because the Bible is so vast and wide in the length of it and the width of it, many times the things that we watch on television and the little things that they come up with, like um, Babel, okay, they have some type of, uh, um, some type of, um, thing they came up with an app or something like that it's called Babel and what Babel is supposed to do is it's something Babel but what it's supposed to do is teach you different languages but can you understand how it defies God it's to teach you different languages if you want to learn this you want to learn that Babel the app will teach you this language but can you see that this is why the Lord de destroyed those that were working on the Tower of Babel. And all of them knew the same language, which is why he destroyed them. Because they all came together with one mind to do evil. They all came together with one mind. And because they all came together with one mind to do evil, the Lord, he destroyed the languages of them all being able to understand each other. Now they have an app called Babel. It teaches you somebody else's language. You see how they're trying to put the pieces back together? They've been trying to do it ever since then. They have an app called Discord. And when the Lord says don't could don't 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 do discord among the brethren. Those that sow discord among the brethren among the brethren, they have an app called Discord. And that was maybe a couple of years ago. I was talking to someone from over across seas and uh, the the communication we had wasn't that good and they they kept telling me to let, let's download discord and let's talk on discord and I just told them I would not and I explained to them why I would not I would not di download discord because it's a spirit now we say it's just a name it's a spirit Every name has a spirit. That's why they say, be careful what you name your kid. Because every name has a spirit to it. Amen. Saints, I'm learning so much this morning. I'm telling you, I just, I'm, I'm elated. I am.
22 says, Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a, with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. <clears throat> and 22 took me back to what I saw, which was, there's no remedy for a spirit that causes a person to be mad. You think punishment and torture and all this? That's a spirit. That's a spirit. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and the and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. Now I hate to because I know we're in an hour, but I just want to share it with you because two in this in this series there was a man and it was a it was an African American man and then there were the Caucasians and the Caucasians found a need to mix the breed. Okay? They found a need to mix the breed and they said, Okay, let's try something. Now, there are many out there that says that the African-American is stronger than any other um, creed of people. The African-American is stronger than any other creed of people. Now, I don't really like talking about race, but just to stand back and watch and to observe, I've observed this, that an African-American a man or woman is strong, very, 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 very strong. That's not to say that Caucasian are not strong, men and women. That's not to say Chinese are not strong, men and women. We have very, the Lord created very intelligent people. But when you're talking about an ox of a man, when you're talking about an ox of a man, most often times that African American is strong. And now I can understand why. The queen was saying that her, her husband, I mean her son was the Caucasian man, but he was the one that kept flipping in and flipping out, kind of mad, you know, every now and then he get mad. So she said, I want to do an experiment. I want to do an experiment. And she went and called for an African American girl to wed him. Now I understand. Like I didn't understand why would you? And this they sent for this girl way across the way, way far away, because <clears throat> most of the people that was in the city, in the town they were in, they kind of sort of knew about the king, but they sent for somebody way away that didn't know about the king, and a very handsome king, and um, she came. African American girl and they said we you know we bought you and we want you to marry uh, no her brother sold her to them and for for her to marry the, the young king and so I'm believing that the queen the reason she called it an experiment is because she wanted to see even though my son is mad if I marry him and wed him to to strength and again that's not to say no other race is strong that's not what I'm saying but the queen said if I if I if I this is what she was thinking if I if I wed him to a strong a very strong woman then maybe just maybe the heir to the throne because they didn't have an heir and she kept pressuring them y'all I want y'all to have kids have kids have kids so she was thinking maybe the strength from mama could cause the child to come out without being mad like his daddy. Is that weird that the Lord is giving me the parts that I don't understand to this series? Is it weird that I'm sharing it with you? How do I feel? I feel embarrassed. I really do things. I feel embarrassed, but... I do. That's why I'm laughing because I feel embarrassed. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm doing it. But yeah. So 
when I'm reading this, it's just the Lord is really showing me some things, you know? Man. Another thing that the Lord was showing me, which is why I say a lot of stuff that they come out with today, saints, these things, we think they're not biblical because these people are not quoting scripture, but they go right in this word and they they begin to act out different things. And they do. And because they're not quoting scripture, we think that we're just enjoying some type of show and we don't even know that they went in and studied the book of the the 27th book of proverbs and a lot of times they coming up with their movie scripts from these books let me tell you something else just like i i just read and this is weird to say this movie came up with these scenes from proverbs chapter 27 only with me saints only with me i'm just telling you only with me. <laughs> It is crazy. I'm telling you, it's crazy. But I have to be honest with you. Like the Lord gave me something about New York. The Lord showed me what they're doing in New York. What the senators and the governors, what are they doing? Not just New York, but Texas. The Lord. A lot of times the Lord will show me. Uh, behind the scenes of stuff not just me but his work his workers his ambassadors his prophets his apostles and all that but a lot of times the Lord will show me behind the scenes of why things are what what they are you know what I'm saying and in in all sincerity when I look at proverbs and these these scriptures that I'm reading now I literally, I'm not talking about figuratively, figuratively, I literally see this series. I literally see the plots, the twists. I literally see where where they got this from. Let me tell you how I know. Because, like I said, there was a the lady, the queen said, we're going to do an experiment. We might not be able to go to, I wanted to go to John 15 and 13, but we might not be able to go over there. But the queen said, let's do an experiment. She went and got an African-American girl. She, uh, They married him. Her and the king uh, married him to the son. And before the girl got there because it was an experiment they didn't have a lot of African American at the top at the head you know coming to their little tea parties and all that so while the girl was on the way from in her on her far journey the queen said let's go and find a couple another couple that's African American so when this girl get here she can see people that kind of look like her and they won't look weird or suspicious. So they went and got um, a, a man and another lady and they they invited them to the to the um, to their house and you know they had tea and treated them nice and said, because we are the king and queen, we want to give you all different names. So they named them different. They gave them names of royalty right they gave them names of royalty and uh, they told the man your name is Lord this and they told the lady your name is Lady this and you know they were the, the, the African American man and woman was looking at each other like what they were just like what oh my okay okay so they took the titles and you know they received it from the king and queen and they were excited when they left and and all of those great things so they just felt like they found favor one day and boom so they they're these big people now so the girl or the lady arrives and of course she marries the king and she sees the in the crowd she sees the other African American couple that seem royal and okay this is not so weird 
Well, the the man, the African American man, who was a lot older than the, than the lady, he ended up dying. <clears throat> And the family to the African American girl that was given the title, the family, after the funeral, they came to her house and they asked her, you know, what happens now? She's like, what do you mean what happens now? And they're like, the title that was given to him, does it pass to one of us? Does it pass to your son? What happens with that? Because that was huge for them. They, you got two nobodies. And the king and queen make them somebody. And give them a new name. A new title. And it was huge. Not just for these two. But their family. <clears throat> so it was the family that was inquisitive. About now what happens to the title. Who gets to be Lord such and such. And what happens to the title. And so the lady now, she goes back to the king and queen, and she has a son that's like three or four, and she's trying to get them to recognize him as Lord, whatever the little boy name was, because she was trying to get that title not to die with her husband. So she went to the queen and said, um, you know, I'm lady such and such, and she recognized the little boy she introduced a little boy to the queen. She said, and this is, um, she said, this is uh, Sir something, 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 right? And the queens was like, caught up. The queen says, oh, it's nice to meet you, Lord. And before she could say the little boy's name, the ones behind her said, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's, it, it, that hasn't been discussed. There's things that have to be talked about before that. So they caught it quick. Before the queen could call the boy that, they caught her quick. Say, uh, uh Which meant that it's got to be discussed to see, are we going to let that name be passed down in your generation or not? It hasn't been discussed. But the reason we gave y'all that name, they didn't say this, but the reason they gave them that name is because when the girl came from afar off knowing that she was a brown skinned girl, that she wouldn't be the only one in this whole thing uh, in royalty and she's the only one brown. Two, looking at the scriptures, when the man died, the older man died, the girl was, the lady that he was married to was thinking that you know she was pretty much well to do well off but she realized that the the only thing that these people gave them was the name she was thinking because they moved to a bigger house a bigger house where they could host balls and uh, they they got finer things and finer clothes and began to dress up nice she was thinking that money came with these titles and roles and things that he and he didn't talk to her about that type of stuff a lot so she was just assuming that the monies and things came along with what happened that day when they were called in there to be given royalty and be given the titles of lord and lady such and such she found out after he died that he was the one that took the majority of his life savings to give them that life to match the name that they were freely given right so when i look at when i look at verse <clears throat> Some of y'all done turn me off, but some of y'all still with me. Look, me and you rock together, all right? We rock together. Do you hear me? <laughs> Do you hear me? Me and you, we rock together, all right? Don't forget it. Okay, so it says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock, and look well to thy herds. 24 says, for riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? 
because the lady was trying to force them to look at the boy the same way and give him the same title that that he gave that they gave the husband that died and the people with the queen said that has not been discussed so no we're not doing that right now because it hadn't been discussed you know what I'm saying so that's why I say it's it's when when I when I when I go into or anytime because I don't watch TV a lot but if there's a series that the Lord let me get into he's always dealing with me and showing me different things and then it's not just natural but spiritual as well amen spiritual as well because here I'm seeing it amen and yeah I don't think it and she began to tell the boy who he was and the other family that they had and telling him that you are somebody and telling him his heritage and why he was somebody which means it's not all the time the name that somebody give you but it's who you know that you are who am I I'm a daughter of God that's who I am who are you you're a son of God it doesn't matter what nobody else call you it don't even matter if they recognize you as a son it don't matter if they recognize you as a daughter if you know in your heart I am a daughter of God I am a son of God that is what matters amen that is what matters Twenty five says the hay appeareth and the tender grass showeth itself and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat milk enough for thy food for the food of thy household. And for the maintenance of thy maidens. Wow. Let's, since we still have time, it's an hour and 16 minutes. I know some people are like thinking that we're not going to publish anything today because it's 540 in uh, Central Time. But we are going to publish Saints. Amen. I started a little late. I think I started at 4, uh, 4, 415. So it's kind of running over a little, little bit. Um, this morning, math, uh, math. I was going to say Matthew, but math came out. Somebody needs to sharpen up in their math. Amen. Somebody sharpen up in your math. <laughs> Somebody sharpen up in that math. All right. Let's let's run over to John fifteen and thirteen real quick, and then we're gonna I'm gonna let you go. Some of them already done left saints. They like this lady talking about series and movies and stuff, and she ain't just I don't. This lady, this lady is talking about some off the wall stuff today, but not really. Um, John 15 and 13 says greater love had no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends the word life is a big word. It is. No greater love than this. Than a man lay down his life. For his friend. Saints have we found a love like this yet? Have we found a love to where someone love us so much 
until they'll lay their own life down for us. I'm not talking about I'll lay cigarettes down for you and I'll lay the alcohol down and I'll lay the adultery down and I'll lay the fornication down. No, all that's well and good, but when we when we start thinking about the word life, sometimes you can hear people in the country say, that person was bigger than life. That means to them that person was huge. Bigger is bigger than life, and they're bigger than life, right? No greater love than this than a man lay down his whole life for his friend. Whole life. All of my wants, all of my desires, everything that I've ever dreamed of. I lay down my life for my friend. Do you know anybody that laid down their whole life? I've heard talk about a mother's love. How a mother's love is pretty, pretty grand. But even the Bible says that will a mother forget her suckling child? She will. So even though that mother love, that mother's love is, it's a deep love. Still, who will lay down their whole life for their friend? Jesus has done it, saints. Jesus has done it. The question now is, will me and you? Because you, I don't know whether you believe it or not, saints, but it's our turn. It's our turn.